All right, guys, my next guest is the chief executive officer of one of Louisiana's most sought-after workforce companies. Our companies not only provide skilled labor, payroll services, and background screeners to government agency and private sector clients in the healthcare, accounting, and construction industry, but her company is 100% minority-owned, and she's in the talk of the town right now. All right, all right, look at, woo, girl. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to take something home tonight. We just talking about jobs. You know it. You know it. Uh, well, Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Louisiana. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm from New Orleans. Oh, you I'm from New Orleans. Orleans. Yeah, we like to say that. We got to, you know, we have to say it. We from New Orleans. It's a little different. I love that tone. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Wait a minute, ladies and gentlemen, okay? <laughs> All right, so you, you have some tips. Now, one of the things I found interesting about your company, uh, yes. DRC Staffing Group. Yes, sir. We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. But uh, you have some points. You, you talked about now, our, our previous guest talked about six seconds that human resources managers have to look at your resume. You talk about the seven second rule of reading a resume. Tell us yes. a little bit about that. Well, actually that's to build off of uh, what the resume doctor stated that that is actually true that uh, hiring managers and recruiters literally will, will look at a resume within seven seconds. They are, we no longer live in the days where someone is actually sitting behind a desk reading a resume. They are literally skimming the resume and they're looking for keywords to match the job description that they actually post. So okay. that's why on your resume, you want to make sure, that, and like Miss Leslie said as well, um, you want to make sure that you have different resumes for different jobs that you're applying to because it's going to help you in making sure your resume is in front of a recruiter or a hiring manager. All right. Now, somebody's saying you, you, you're very beautiful. I think uh, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm trying to hold my mute tonight now. I'm telling you, you know, see how you're giving all this gorgeous. We just thought we're trying to get some jobs. You oh, coming in here looking like right. a fashion model. That's right. That's right. Thank now, you. Now let's Never let's talk it. about one more thing. Um, mm -hmm. When you when you look at and I, and I made a joke just now about your beauty, but you are in an industry that's pretty much male driven, male dominant, and yes. you are a hundred percent minority owned and ladies and gentlemen, owned by a woman. Yes. Yes. Look yes. at that, a woman of color. To, to, to that's right. So, that's so, right. How is it for you in your industry? Because you have one of the most sought after companies in Louisiana and mm -hmm. your company gets contracts for government jobs, healthcare, accounting, construction. These are all yes. industries that's pretty much predominantly dominated by uh, men. So, yes. so is that something that you deal with in your industry? I do, um, actually, and it's very hard. Uh, you you really have to set yourself apart because staffing is, I don't want to say it's generic, but it's kind of the same thing done repeatedly. The process is the same. So you have to find a little niche that will set yourself apart from everyone else. That's why we only cater to certain industries. Um, I like to think that we are a candidate focused agency. That's not to say we don't care about our clients because we do, but we want to make sure that we're hearing everything that our candidates say when we're saying, oh, hey, what kind of career are you looking for? You know, what are your career goals? What are your personal goals? Because sometimes the two can tie together. So we want to make sure that we're giving our candidates, you know, as much as possible for what they're looking for and of course meeting our clients needs as well because i like to say there 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 isn't um you can't do one without the other and you can't make the other feel more important than the other and i found that a lot with with some staffing agencies so so you, you talked about social media and people's job search you know right now people are sitting at home and yes. They spend a lot of hours on social media. So how does those two tie in together? 
Uh, actually, if you are actively job searching, and I will say in my opinion, do a little housekeeping on your social media profile because, especially if it's a public account, um, because as a person who, uh, you know, meets with meet with different candidates uh, quite often, that is a part of my process in making determinations as to who I'm going to send to uh, to meet with a client and basically drive it further into that that interviewing process. You may be skilled in, in, in your craft or industry, whatever it is you do, but again, you don't want to put it, you know, so, such negative information out for the world to see. So that's why I advise um, a lot of our candidates to, to do a little housekeeping on social media accounts or, you know, make everything private or do different things on different accounts because you don't want potential employers seeing, you know, negative things or, you know, you know, you in a negative light. You just don't want to put that out there. Yeah, I, I think that's vitally important because oftentimes we we don't separate who we desire to be online versus who we right. really are in, in person. Right. And anytime you're going, when you need somebody else for you to pay your bills and you to eat and all that kind of stuff, you got to take those things into account when you're looking yes. at employment, especially online. Okay, yes. so. Um, because we look, if you're in a hiring decision, we look, <laughs> decision making seat, we look, we do look, we check. So, so when somebody comes into your office looking for work or you're looking for candidates, uh, is that the first thing you do? Second, third, how far down the list of importance is, is the social media search? It's, it's the, honestly, it's the, Last thing I look for once I've performed a background uh, check, drug screenings, it's literally the last thing I look for. And if it's something very small, you know, that they may have done it, I'm able to see it. Honestly, majority of the time, I'll get them on the phone and let them know, oh, hey, you know, can you clean this up or can you block this? Can you take this off? Because I don't want to put you in a position where if I can see it, who I'm, you know, recommending you to, who, the company that I'm recommending you to, I don't want, you know, their, right. okay. their, their people to see it at all. So, yeah. So, so how does someone quantify their accomplishments on, on, on you know, when they're looking for employment? Sure. You want to take any accomplishments, um, your experience in your jobs and, and quantify. And that's basically saying, and I'll give an example. Um, let's say you work in sales. Instead of saying, oh, you increased um, the product level or whatever with the company. I'm, I'm not really well versed in sales. That's not my area. But let's say you, you generated a hundred thousand dollars in in sales within three months you mm -hmm. want to actually put that number in your resume because from experience and from what i've seen and from the, just having conversations with hiring managers and other recruiters and again people in decision making seats they're going to see numbers first as opposed to sitting back reading an, an entire resume the numbers is what's going to catch their attention first okay now, now you sit on the opposite side you are the person mm -hmm. that does the hiring <laughs> yeah. so so right now in let's say somebody's watching or somebody's listening who live in louisiana or uh, new orleans in, in your area you know how would they go about working with your your staff and agent what's the process they can submit their resumes online um i will see it um I'm a per I, I still believe in human to human contact. So even though a lot of stuff is electronically done today, I still like I said, I still like to put my hands on it. So they can the first step is submitting a resume online and I will review it. I will see it. Um and again, we only uh supply labor to accounting, healthcare, uh, and the construction industries. So if you're you're in those industries, you're looking more submit your resume online um, and I will compare it to any open positions that we have. And then it'll go from there. It'll lead to a phone conversation. Uh, and it may, honestly, it may start with an email first and then it'll lead to a phone conversation and it goes deeper than that. Okay. So we're going to start with an email may lead yeah. to a phone conversation. If you like what you see in the email. Absolutely. 
Okay. So give people your uh, website. It's drcstaffinggroup.com. drcstaffinggroup.com. You got it. All right. Linnell Barrow is here with us tonight. Thank you so much for uh, sitting on our talk of the town and talking about the things that uh, can help people. Hopefully, a lot of people have been uh, assisted tonight by your presence. I know they have loved that beautiful smile, that New Orleans <laughs> accent. <laughs> My God. <laughs> somebody Thank might want to know, is Pitch. she married? Wait, huh? I said somebody might want to know, are you married or not? But we ain't going to talk about it's, that tonight. I don't want to set you up. I don't want to set coming. you up. It's, it's coming. Okay. But that means she got a, she got a little friend. <laughs> <laughs> she might have a little friend, okay? <laughs> All right. Um, Talk of the Town is brought to you by PKC LLC, ladies and gentlemen. They are on the cutting edge of bringing our African American students back to African American colleges. And Linnell, thank you so much for being on the show. Up next in our thank one you. shot. We got Miss uh, Rachel Pins, I think that's her name, but we'll be right back. Don't test that dial. It's off the fence. I'm yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Just now. Like I have the radio on the telly. 